Hey everybody, welcome back to another video, uh, what I used to call my 5 minute build series, which I am now changing to quick builds, because none of them ever seem to take 5 minutes, but they are still kind of quick comparatively, because they're focusing on one kind of thing instead of an entire, you know, giant build. Anyway, this is going to be my gazebo build, um which I put a teaser on a short about, but you can kind of see here. This was inspired by my daughter, who was building in the sandbox, or not in the sandbox, the biodome, and wanted, she said, Dad, can you make me a round thing that people go into? And I think she tried to describe it a little bit more, but every time she did, I got more and more confused. But luckily, I uh, used a lifeline, phone a friend, and... Um, Mrs. Dad Tube was able to decipher it into figuring out that she wanted a gazebo. And so I set to making it. You know, first one turned out pretty good. So I made a few more. And I think I have it down pretty well now. So I will show you how to make it. Again, still super cheap with these basic shapes. Unless you want to add, you know, some cool, too much cool stuff to it. But let's get going. Alright, so here we are on a nice open area. As usual, I will post a kind of build list in the comments for you to go by. Again, this is super cheap because we're going to be using some pretty basic shapes. First thing you want to do is decide where you're going to want kind of your orientation to be. Uh, if you want it to like open up to a certain direction, I'll choose you know this entrance over here between the rocks. And then we'll start building. And the... The stuff you want to start off with is a medium floor plan panel. Um, I would not use the wood grain style because the way we're going to rotate it, it's just going to look weird because it's not going to match up, um, even though, even if you're going for a wood look. But um, we can just color it kind of a wood color later. But we take one medium floor panel, set it down, and then we're going to work off that. Throughout this, I'm going to be showing a lot of tricks with like the clone tool and how to select multiple pieces and clone and to make your life easier but we need to make a octagon and to do that we'll start and we'll clone this piece and then we'll move it over here a little bit and then we're going to want to use switch to the default drag is earlier easiest for this one and we're going to want to do large grid size over here and do three turns so one two three that's going to set us up to get a nice even octagon around and then you know kind of move this guy into place a little bit you could just do it back here you'll get pretty close but we'll come along and kind of um, adjust that later so we're going to do the same thing over here we're going to move this guy over and we're going to rotate it or switch like default dragger do one two three and then switch back to advanced move. You don't want to use default dragger to try to move it because once it gets too close, it doesn't want to, you know, overlap. So it just starts to move things up to a uh, stack things on top of each other. And that's not what we want. Um, and then once we have that, if you look at these corners, they actually line up pretty well if we stayed in the same place. We can come back later and make those a little different if we want. Um, and then we'll do one final clone of this. And then switch to default dragger. One, two, three. And move it back into place. Now, once you see, once we get this into place, we have all the pieces we need kind of, you know, at the right orientation we need. And we can really begin to, uh, let's, uh, let's switch over to, you know, uh, maybe a medium or even if you really want to get it go to small um, and to get these lined up just right if they don't line up naturally because throughout this thing it really depends on how well you make things ahead of time or how easy it's going to be down the line um, so investing in making sure things are lined up early on pays out that dividends later a uh, programming term is garbage in garbage out which means if you uh start with garbage you're going to end up with garbage once you have the, kind of like the base pieces you can start to see that you can just utilize existing ones that are rotated the one you want so we want to put one over here a square well we can just use this clone it and move it over to here and it's going to be right where we need it 
and like like I said, if it's uh, if you've lined it up before, then this one's gonna line up right with the edge of this over here, again. And so you know now we need one curved here. Well, this one is the exact angle we need, and we can just clone it again and move that one down and line up right there at the corner. And then we need one. We can use this one, clone down to here and finally this one from this corner and get that lined up and now you'll see we have pretty much a perfect octagon. And again, it doesn't have to be super perfect, but the better you get it, the nicer it'll look. So now don't worry about the hole yet because what we actually want to do is, you know, I mean, you could leave it like this, but I like to have a kind of step look. So we're going to select this entire thing. Then we're going to clone it. And I find switching back to a large placement grid when we go up is good because then you, all it takes is about one tick up for it to stack right on top of itself. And then if you go back to the default dragger and you scale it like one click in, what it does, what happens is though, when you scale that down, it doesn't keep it centered. So you'll look and say, well, yeah, it made it smaller, but it made it all the way to the right. So we're gonna want an advanced move. We'll probably just switch back to medium to get it where we want, but then just kind of eyeball this to make it look like it's in the center. It's not impaired, but it'd be perfect, correct, because you're not going to build anything on the lower level. So anyway, once we get it kind of looking good, then we can call that pretty much good. Now you'll see that hole in the center. We didn't worry about that before because it was the bottom layer. Now we'll want to fill it in. And so we can just clone that and push that in and cover that up. So now we have our base and it's looking pretty good. A good foundation to start building. One thing I would recommend whenever you're going to be building, especially if it's going to take more than like five minutes, is use some of the new floodlights they just added. Stick a few of these around because when it gets dark, oops, when it gets dark and you have to line up angles and do stuff like that, it becomes a real pain. Either like 20 bucks each, you can sell them when you're done as long as you're going to finish here before they, they depreciate in value. So we'll just set four of these around and trust me when night comes you'll notice the difference a lot all right so now we need to start with uh building the supports and we'll go back to the good old rectangular beam and get one of these to start see just turned dark and you can see a lot better when it's night and you start to look at these angles, they really start to blend in with one another. You know, I can show you a little bit, like move this away. See, every time you move one little way, you start to be able to see the contrast a lot less. So it becomes harder to line things up and you really have to squint. So it's good to work with, with uh, at night with some light. So anyway, we know these pillars, they're a bit too big as they come. So if you scale them down to like a good pillar size, I think, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. Use your choice here. Any one of those two would probably be a good size. Now we're going to have to have each and one of these in each corner. And you'll notice when we move it in there, if we keep it flush with one side, then it looks really good for that side. You know, it looks really good there, but then, uh, but then, you know, it's going to be the pillar for this size, and now we have this huge gap here. So, there, because of this isn't like a straight on square, that these square pillars won't quite look good there. So, I think it looks best to kind of bring it in here. If you're on medium placement grid, give it one turn, and that way, it's what it's going to do is it's going to sit in here, and you, know, you may have to move it back a little bit, or maybe even play with the advanced mover um, to get it kind of sitting but it, what happens is then it sits in this corner rotated almost as the same it's not going to line up a, a perfect but you kind of have an equal distance on each side and when we go to put the cross beams later it doesn't look as silly or if it does it looks uniformly silly instead of really silly on one side and not on the other so anyway 
we have this beam, and since we shrunk it, it's not very tall anymore, certainly not tall enough to be a gazebo support. So if you clone this about two more times, you can get away with one, but I think it looks better when it's a little taller. Uh, like right now, it's obviously big enough for you to get through, but if you're going to be hanging stuff, I think it looks good if you give it like a third beam there and extend that up and, and get it about maybe that tall. So that way, if we have some hanging plants or lights or something, they're not going to seem too squished. So now we have that beam and now we can use this kind of beam to clone a bunch of other beams and specifically again when you have this kind of uh angle where or we have these eight corners as it is in this octagon two of them are always going to be the same um the same orientation so if we clone if we select this entire three pieces and clone this then you're going to find that it lines up or it's oriented perfectly for the opposite corner that it was placed in over there being here and so it is perfect now now we just got to do it for a couple of rotate a couple more times to the other corners but now that we already have this selected then you could just go up here again to clone move it here now, you'll, now we'll see here that it's not good, but if we switch to the default dragger and we give a couple rotations until it looks exactly like in this corner as it did in the other ones where it's kind of rotated to be halfway, so halfway uh, rotated between each side, then we say oh, we'll clone this one and look for its opposite corner which is going to be over here okay so now we have four of the eight corner post done so we'll clone this one again we'll move it over here give it a rotation probably one yep it looks like one pretty much does a good job right there of uh actually didn't even need that one yeah okay so it's good in here now we'll find its complement we'll clone this again and find its complementary corner which should be over And then we have one more to do, or we have one more orientation to do and two more posts. Um, there we go. Switch to default dragger. It's looking pretty good there. And then clone. Again, as long as you don't unselect this at any time. If you do, you just use the multi-select tool to go back and select all three pieces. Then you're always going to have the three selected to be able to clone this beam. And drag that pretty much into place. Okay, and now we have all the beams we need. And so now we're going to start doing the cross support. So in this case, we know we're not going to have a support here. Well, we're going to do the rails is, is what I'm talking about. But the uh, we're not going to have the support there. But we are going to, if we want to keep the same kind of um, scale of the pillars, what we'll do is we'll take one of these. And we'll clone it. If we reset, it's gonna it resets so that it's not so that it's uh, kind of perpendicular here, and 
we're already medium, which will be fine. We'll want to go into some advanced rotation because uh, rotating with the default dragger will just spin it in place, but we actually want to turn it 90 degrees this way and advance mover to get it into place. Oh, but we don't actually want to do this side because this is going to be our entrance. So let's just move this back to here because we know that the back one is the same orientation and we do actually want us for the rail there. So anyway, we'll move this until we're pretty much less like on the merging into the support here. And If you look at that, that looks pretty good. When you when you get away with it, see it it goes in, but it doesn't stick out too much. So we may be able to get away with then cloning this and just doing one across, two across instead of needing three. I think we will. Yeah. So there, then that rail it goes in pretty well at an angle there instead of uh what it would be is it, where if it was just. Uh, perpendicular but then the other side was all off and then we can take and clone one of these switch to the advanced rotate turn it 90 degrees and we'll put a couple of posts we'll put two posts in between each support So you can kind of eyeball this into place and then clone and eyeball again. You know, again, doesn't you don't have to measure this out with a ruler or anything just so it looks pretty equidistant. So now we have these railings, this rail here, and we're not going to put one over here, but we are going to put one around the rest of the way. So what we can do again is you want to move this, maybe this floodlight out of the way just for a second. But if you stand in here and you have nothing like in the background that's going to get uh, get accidentally selected, but if you come here and select just what you need, we're going to get, and it may not always look like it, but uh, you can test and we'll clone this and we'll say, look at that. And yep, we got the railing. So now what we want to uh, rotate this to make this uh, section here. If you're staying in medium, it should you should have not too much trouble getting into place and finding a good angle. Let's see when you uh, stick into there, then you'll eventually find the sweet spot where yep, you're looking pretty good. Now you don't. The key is don't deselect yet because what you want to do is once you're sure you kind of have it good into place. So we know we're going to be putting one on the other side. Again, as long as we're lined up, as long as we paid attention to angles before, we can clone this rail, drag it over to here, and it's set. It's perfect. And now we have this, and so we'll clone again. Now we need to adjust, clone, adjust, clone. Drag it over here. Rotate it. Oh, well, that was strange. You know what? If that ever happens, what you do is you just do that. And if you're really like, oh, I don't even know, or if you're having trouble, you can always go back to the point where you just reclone it again. And I'm not sure what the limit is on the undo, but you can get back to the point where you pretty much bought it and then undo it again. Um, so let's clone this again. Let's advance rotate and hope it doesn't decide to get all funky again. What on earth? Oh, I wonder if it has to do with the... That's oh, just crazy. What does it have to do with the floodlight out there? This never happened to me in all the builds. I was, I built this thing like a hundred times. Let's see. One thing you can do too is is you can select one, 
hold your control button, select individual pieces, and sometimes the in the advanced mover. Okay, so there we go. Uh, it's just strange, but more bugs for the uplift team to fix. Okay, so now that we've dealt with that, now we'll clone this guy again and just slide him over to the other side to fill in that. Oops, actually got I went a little too high. And, oops, I shouldn't have unselected that because we have one more to do. But, you know what, we can just uh, come over here and select this portion. Clone. I hope it doesn't freak out again. Rotate. Make trigger on the outside and maybe that'll keep it from freaking out. Okay, and then once that's into place, we'll clone that final railing bit. Sometimes you think you're going one axis and you're going a completely different one, but all right, so that is done. Now we have all the supports. We have the rails. It's looking pretty good. Now all we need is the roof. The roof can be a little tricky, but it doesn't actually require that many pieces. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the square roof panel and it may not make sense at first because it is not a square shape but you'll see what we're going to do so once we once you kind of get it the idea is first to kind of line it up with these square points and these square points and really kind of in the center of the uh, of the whole thing. So if you get in here and you see, okay, that's looking pretty centered. Then we're going to go, we're going to raise it up. We're going to raise the roof, as they say. And then we're going to expand this guy with the default dragger, super large, larger than the upper section, but maybe not larger than the base. I might've gone a little too far, but yeah, so, and don't care that it doesn't look like it's being supported everywhere yet because what we're going to do is then we're going to rotate this so that you may have to go to small here. What you want is you want the, and make sure you're rotating along this axis. You want it to kind of line up in the center of the supports here for at least some for the side. So you see one to and if it doesn't line up completely it's not totally big deal three okay so we have that and that's looking pretty good and now we're going to clone this and switch back to medium you may have to get out switch back to medium grid large may do but medium definitely will and we'll rotate this so that it now lines up with the other panels or other supports. So now we have kind of all eight supports. We've made, basically made a star pattern here with uh, to match the octagon with the square. This can take a little bit, uh, you know, it's still, it's not perfect underneath and you won't really notice it, but it can take a little bit of maneuvering to get into place. But you'll see now if uh, we take that away that it's looking like a pretty good roof. And for extra touch, what you can do is then clone this again move it up a little bit and then shrink it down if you if you shrink it so much that it falls in besides you got to just move it up again a little bit so it shrank shrank 
Okay. So now, now we do the same thing once we get it into place. Then we clone that. You can't really see it. This is actually one where it looks better at nighttime uh, once you can see the contrast. But you want to do a couple notches of this so that if you zoom in here, you should see that it actually does the same thing as a cap. It makes another star here on the cap. And maybe once we change the color, which we can do now, um, you'll see the contrast a lot bit more. So, you know, we can get rid of these lights now. You can sell them for full price as long as it's still the same day. You don't really need these anymore. Now you can see. Now you can see the contrast. The light kind of washes out the stuff at the top a little bit in the beginning. But you have a nice little cap on there now that matches the rest of the roof. So now, the thing is pretty much done. Now we can color it. You could color each piece, by the way, along the way, but easiest to just do it at the end. You know, get a good bird's eye view, select the whole thing, go in here in your coloring, pick a color either with the default colors or the advanced picker and hit confirm and it's gonna color the whole thing. If you want to get really fancy you could make the rails different color than the rest, but there. Now you have your gazebo. You've got your open side over here. You can go in and start to furnish. I think the rattan furnishing kind of looks good in there. Um Rattan sofa, you can put it there. You can put a few of these around if you want, um, as well as the um, table. Looks good in there. Um, if you want to, you definitely want to have some lights. Um, I think on my original build, I took and put uh, lanterns around. Oops, I spelled it like the Pokemon, I think. Not called. No. Oh. Okay. All right. Once you learn to spell, then you can put these kind of lanterns around and hang these up. Um, that's why I was saying it, it looks better sometimes if you have a higher roof. That way, when you hang these, it doesn't block the view either. You could also do um, what are they like? String, short, light string, the curved one would look pretty good in here if you rotated it. Probably have to make this a little bigger, or I think there was another size one as well, but you can kind of play with that. And then, of course, uh, clone that to the other side. And if you're going to do that, you know, you probably do it all the way around. You can put some, you know, bushes around some of these ornamental bushes. I think came from the hospital update, but do pretty good here as well. I think you can even color, yeah, you can color this base to match your thing and you know you could put flowers in there what you do is you put this in here or something and then advance move it so you hide the pot and only leave the flower showing so you can do all kinds of stuff uh you, you can really spend a lot of money on various accessories if you want depending on how you want it to look and then you've got yourself a pretty cozy little gazebo now for you and your friends or just you and your pet to hang out in. So I hope this was an informative video. Uh, if you have success, I would love to see pictures. If you make modifications, if you have questions, put it in the comments. Let me know and look forward to more videos. Take it easy, everyone.